Let me go first to a, an area of the world that concerns all of us, and that's Iran. The, we know that the Iranian people have relied on the internet and satellites to get news, sometimes often of the outside world, but sometimes even of what's going on in their own country. Now it turns out that the um, Iranian government has spent millions of dollars to block internet and social media connections inside of Iran. To me, that's a sign of a people, the sign of a regime afraid of their own people. They, uh, they, and they want to hide their actions from the rest of the world. In an earlier time, oppressive regimes trapped their people behind an iron curtain. The Iranian government is trying to muzzle its people behind an electronic curtain. And I'm, I'm troubled by their, uh, what they're doing, not just for their own people, but when they're jammed like this, they're also stopping programs to other countries. Hey, you had a recent address, which I thought was superb, at the Newsium, spelling out principles of global internet freedom for the benefit of people everywhere. And that was well received around the globe. But what do we do here? Um, they, it, it appears that Iran has broken uh, international agreements in doing this. Is that correct? Yes. Well, we, um, we have worked with uh, the State Department and others beginning in fiscal year 2008. We provided funds to facilitate internet communications by people around the world in ordinary societies. We, we, stand, uh, we stand with them. I, I noticed in article in the Washington Post, February 18th, that mentioned the National Security Council discouraged the Broadcasting Board of Governors, the board that oversees the Voice of America, and other U.S. international broadcasters from signing a statement with the BBC and uh, Deutsche Welle denouncing Iranian jamming of their broadcast because they, they, were, they were blocked as well as uh, VOA. In the end, VOA ended up signing that statement. Is there, is there disagreement in the administration of the need to uh, strongly protest internationally this violation of international agreements by Iran? Mr. Chairman, there is no disagreement. Um, as I said in my internet freedom speech, uh, the development of new tools that enable citizens to exercise their rights of free expression and virtual assembly, because I think it's rooted in both, um, needs to be uh, protected and advanced. And we need these new tools, particularly in Iran, but not only in Iran. Um, so the State Department is uh, looking very closely at what more we can do to try to work with the private sector in partnership uh, to unblock the internet, to get information flowing, uh, to speak out against the kinds of uh, abuses that we see going on uh, out of uh, internet. We are providing funds to groups around the world to make sure that uh, these new tools get to the people who need them. Uh, we are, we've been assisting in those areas for some time, and thanks to this subcommittee, which has helped to pioneer uh, the funding for these efforts. But there's so much more that we can and should do, and Inside the State Department, I've created uh, a, a group of young tech-savvy uh, diplomats. We're doing what we call 21st century statecraft. And they are uh, working, uh, again, as I say, with the private sector. This is not all just American government efforts. In order to be able to unjam and circumvent uh, with our technologies uh, the kind of uh, blockades that the Iranians are uh, using. There's still a lot to be done, and I, I think that the, the discussion inside the administration is what are the most effective ways of doing it. You know, some of the technology, for example, that we would very much uh, like to see uh, used uh, to unblock uh, Iran is uh, very valuable technology. We have to be careful about how it is utilized so it doesn't get into the wrong hands. Sure, but but we're, we we're focused on this, Mr. Chairman. But we also have to be uh, working, I would assume, with other 
other countries, if, if there's a violation of a bilateral agreement, I, I, I've heard that some of the things, some of their blocking efforts have not only block uh, uh, satellite transmissions into neighboring countries, but in one instance, as far away as Italy. Right. Well, when they and, bring down the cell phone networks, that has broad ramifications. Right, right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the satellite, it's, it's not just Voice of America, it's a whole right. lot of others. Uh, I know we try to tighten bilateral sanctions against Iran, targeting the Revolutionary Guard. We're seeking the support of Russia, China, and other countries for UN sanctions. Are there other things we should be doing? I, I know the House and Senate has passed legislation imposing sanctions on petroleum companies that do business with Iran. What about that? Well, Mr. Chairman, um, we support the purpose and the principles of, of the bills, both uh, the bill in the House and the uh, sanctions bill that recently was passed by unanimous consent here in the Senate. Uh, we want to have as strong uh, a partnership with the Congress as possible. Uh, we need to enlist every possible uh, tool that we can bring to bear on this. And we look forward to working with the Congress. What, what we're hoping for is that whatever sanctions emerge from the conference committee um, have some flexibility uh, that will support our ongoing efforts. Because you rightly pointed out, we are working very hard with our partners uh, in the Security Council. We've already made it clear that uh, we stand ready to do both unilateral and multilateral sanctions on top of whatever comes out of the Security Council. But while we're in the midst of these negotiations, uh, it would be very useful for us to be in close consultation with the Congress so that whatever is done here uh, supplements and supports what we're trying to get done um, in the Security Council. Well, I'm going to let, let us uh, follow up on that another discussion, just as I will on the request for uh, increase in the economic support fund for Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iraq. Uh, that I worry about the billions that were wasted in years past because there seemed to be emphasis on burn rate more than on on the results. And I think you and I should discuss that more as we go forward with the bill. And I will also be talking to you about a group of Vermont high school students who wanted to travel to Cuba to set up a sister school relationship with Cuban students uh, after doing their own research, getting ready for that and all, they ran into U.S. travel restrictions. You know, I remember we are such a great and powerful nation. It just seems so beneath, so beneath a nation as wonderful and as powerful as ours to tell kids they can't go back and forth and talk to students in Cuba. Uh, they can go into, they can go to Russia, and they can go to China, they can go everywhere else. Here's little Cuba. It makes no sense. <laughs> you don't have to answer that. <laughs> I know, I, I, I can see the wheels turning, and I'll let you off the hook, but we'll talk further about that.